Dennis, it's good to see you. Praise God. Wonderful. You're early. You're early to church. That's beautiful. Nice. Hi, Toya. Toya Wales. Beautiful. Hey, little George. Hi, Shiana. Beautiful. Beautiful. Good night, Mrs. Murray. Beautiful. Hey, CB. It's good to see you tonight. Curtain. Wow. Linzo, Linzo. Yeah. Prettige avond. Hi, Mrs. Hema. Beautiful. From Suriname. Good evening. The only, the only boss man. Wonderful. Yes, and uh, the guys are around. Hello. My God. The only beautiful Patricia. <laughs> Good night, Jay. Jay Allen. It's beautiful. Little Pastor Mary. It's Good night. It's good evening, but it's good night, isn't it? Good evening, good night. You know, any of them works. Beautiful. Granny. Jackie the Silver, good night. <laughs> Hello. Beautiful. Yes, I see them boys. Them boys watching. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. I can see you, Winchester. I can see you. Beautiful. Beautiful. Danny boy. Danny boy. Birthday boy. Wonderful. Yes, Miss Sister King, it's dinner time. The green side, we're right here. God bless you. God bless you. It's beautiful. Wow. And our castle guys are on tonight. Praise the Lord. No taxi. No, sisters are no taxi. You don't have to pay passage. You got to give offering though. Hi, <laughs> good evening. Wonderful. Good night, sister Waveney. Good night. Good night. Sister Abiola, good night. Good to see you. Good to have you. I hope you're all doing well. Wonderful. Hey, Tini. Who has it, Maisha? Good, good. Wonderful. A frisse Avon Perry. It's blind of you to see you from Avon. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Beautiful. Natasha, good evening, good evening. It's good to have all you, all of you. This is the green side. This is the green side. Hi, Shannon. Beautiful. Lucille, Lucille. Good night. Lucille, good night. It's beautiful. Jamela Heatley. Okay, I see you. Beautiful. Cho Cho. My God, the dance machine. <laughs> good night, Kevin. Beautiful. Wow. Listen. Beautiful. All of you, you're welcome. Beautiful. I see Phoebe. I see Mary. I see Tefa. Wonderful. Beautiful. I see Professor. Professor just joined. You're welcome. Nikki, good evening. It's beautiful. From the East Coast. Victoria. Beautiful. Beautiful. Good night. Good night, good night. Wow. It's a blessing to be gathered tonight. Hey, Prevail, Dejon. Good evening, good evening. I say good night, right? Good night. 
man, Chase, my boy Chase. <laughs> Beautiful, it's good to have you listen. Good night. My God, it's good to have all of you. It's such a great privilege. Share, you know, share with your friends, share with your family. We're about to have dinner tonight. I bless you, Jackie Phil. It's good to have all of you here. Beautiful. Natasha Fraser. Yeah, Kurt. Good night, boy. Good night. It's good to see you. Good to have you, man. Junior. Hi. Kenrick. It's good to have you. Well, 99. We're looking for that one person to make it 100 and we will start. It's 101. Beautiful. I think it's a good time to start. Amen. Hallelujah. Dale is watching. Dale, wonderful. Dale Black. Wow, it's good to have you. Malaika. Where's my where's your bag, Malaika? <laughs> Beautiful. It's nice to see all the names that are known, you know, from the church and around the circles. It's very, very important. The Bible says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as a manner of summits. And therefore, it's so wonderful to have you uh, tonight as we um, go through uh, the green side and see what God has in store for us tonight. You want to pray? You want to pray wherever you are? You want to, you know, just pray? Just pray. want to pray. Just lift up your voice and, and thank God. Thank God for tonight. Thank God. Thank God. Cabros que brende bekeria bakarababa. Bible says that anyone who speaks in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man. Bible says that he edified himself. He speaketh mysteries. So speak in tongues. If you if you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, speak in tongues tonight. Kebros ke brende makaya bakabrandara makatara bakadere be kabrondos likate barama maskata baraba babanderebe. Wherever you are, let your atmosphere change by the speaking in tongues. Makabrondos kiria akatara makurie besketele me kebrende meskebrondo. Reta tabara maku eri akabara basata marandere me kebendere me kebrende me skebrende makaro keberi be keria makabra baba lift up your voice and pray kabrende maskata ya likebere 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 ya makato yo bokrobos kotorovoria mamandere me ne maskata baba anyone who speaks in an unknown tongue the bible says that edifies himself we want to edify ourselves tonight by speaking in tongues just for a few minutes Brondi, Rika Barabasata, Barande de Mea, Macataboro, Rebeketeri Berebendea, Masata, Maya Sata Marama Manda, Make Bendi, Make Brende Mekeria Baba, Marondos, Kuboria Caria Masata Taya, Rekete, blessed be your name, Le Cabo Seterebea, as we gather tonight, O God, Le Boro, Sika Barande de Abacabra Baba, let your presence be felt in every home, O God, La Borobo, Sike Brende Mekeria Baba. Kaya bandoro mo kebrende ske, rikere be sete bere me kebrende me keri ababa. Hallowed be thy name, O God. Hallowed be thy name. Lika bara ba kabranda maskete bere bere bere. Hallowed be thy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, blessed Lord Jesus. Let's pray tonight, Father. Tonight we thank you for this privilege and this opportunity again uh, to gather and to meet here on the green side. I pray, my Lord, that you will speak to our hearts. You will affect our lives. You will calm our storms. And our Lord, you will not allow us to uh, leave this program the same as we joined. Thank you for everyone who has joined and those that are yet to join. Those who will watch this video even hereafter. I pray for an impartation. And I pray, oh God, that their minds, their souls, their spirits will be affected by this message. In Jesus' name, somebody type, Amen. Wonderful. It's good to have you again. We're looking at um, curses, curses. I know those of you, um, those of us in Guyana, the whole place is all over the place. Um, you know, quite a stay in the system. But Bible says, looking unto Jesus, looking unto Jesus, the author who, and the finisher of our faith. So those of you in Guyana, with all that is going on, don't, don't be moved at all. Don't be moved at all. It's, that's why David said, the Lord is my shepherd. And I shall not want. I don't want to get too much into this politics or politics like some people say. But 
what God has said is what will happen. And therefore, um, whatever Claude is saying is going to do, it is all in the hands of the Lord. We are not orphans. We are not people who don't have hope. And therefore, we are not... You see, God, you see, God is able to use a donkey. You know, it's in the Bible. Jesus said he, he could even let the stones praise him. So no matter whatever is happening, let us be calm, let us be cool, let us be collected. I believe that God is going to um, um, take our country forward in a grand style. Our destiny is great. I don't think any demon or any devil can change the destiny of this beautiful country. And so we are looking at how to neutralize the curse. I see my brother Bishop Atto has joined. Bishop Atto, you're welcome. Um, so how to neutralize a curse. How to neutralize a curse. I'm preaching from um, the book uh, written by um, Bishop Dagwood Mills. We've gone through the definition of a curse. And we are at the causes, the causes of curses. Now, for those of you who are joining us and those of you who are following, one of the most important things that we are trying to establish is the fact that curses are very, very, very dangerous. Now, Christians are more, many of us Christians, and of course, if you don't know, uh, that's what happens. Ignorance is quite a the disease. If you don't know, if you don't know what the Bible says, you do all kinds of things. But the, one of the things that the Bible uses to describe heaven is, 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 is a place where there shall be no curse, which means that there is curses here on earth. And people are afraid of the devil. People are afraid of demons. People are afraid of principalities. People are afraid of spiritual wickedness in high places. People are afraid of oh, the obia man. People are afraid of the witch. People are afraid of some juju or something. I remember um, one fateful uh, Wednesday morning, uh, one of my uh, uh, lady pastors who was um, in, in the church at the time, you know, with one or two people, uh, gave me a call, a very frantic call on a Wednesday morning. Um, you know, she uh, was beckoning me to come to church uh, to, to see something. So I was just trying to find out and she was begging me if I could just come and see. So I just, you know, jumped into my, my car and I drove to... Um, drove to the uh, the church, uh, which is now the Resurrection and Life Cathedral here in Georgetown. So I went there. I didn't even see at the entrance to uh, uh, to the to the to the church. I drove through, went to park my car, and therefore the lady pastor took me back to the gate, and um, there she showed me some things on the on the ground. I had not even seen it. I drove over it. I didn't even see it. And 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 lo and behold, uh, somebody had come to the church in East La Penitence, Georgetown, East La Penitence. They had come in front of the church. This is a few years ago. And they had broken eggs, white eggs, in front of the church. The main entrance to the church. They had broken eggs. And I saw plantain, you know, plantain cut up also, right in front of the, uh, uh, the entrance to the church. And, and, and I didn't know. I know eggs. I know the egg. Because, you know, coming from, coming from <laughs> uh, West Africa, <laughs> you don't know obia like, like I know. <laughs> the obia that you people see around here is, 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 is joke obia. And so from the eggs, I, I, I knew what was going on. But the plantain, I didn't know. I didn't know that in Guyana, if you want to uh, kind of cast a spell on somebody that you, you, you break eggs and plantain. I mean, I, I, I wish they had given me the plantain to eat and not, not throw it on the floor. But you had the egg, you know, the, the egg, the yolk, the shells. You had the plantain cut up right at the entrance to the church. And um, I was amazed. I was baffled. I didn't even know that Guyana, you know, there were things like that. But it was amazing. And I was, no, I was not afraid at all because uh, those things don't work. Bible says that I give you power to trample over serpents and over scorpions. But you see, as much as we have so much power over the, 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 the works of darkness, it is also very, very, very tricky when it comes to curses. And so curses are very deep. They can run very deep. God said that he can visit the iniquities of the fathers to the children from, from the first to the fourth generation. So when something... Is, 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 is working through a generation when something is working through your bloodline by means of a curse, it is deeper than a devil. Because remember when Jesus was around, devils were running away. The, the demons would see him and then they would, they would bow and they would beg not to, uh, um, not for him not to cast them out of the, of the city and all of that. So demons, the devil, witches, they are not as powerful as curses. You see, these entities rather take advantage of curses and then they hold on to the curse and then people deteriorate uh, further. And so we are looking at curses 
And you and me as Christians do not want to do things that will entertain curses. We've looked at a few curses in Deuteronomy chapter 28. God spoke vividly to the Israelites the things that they would do and they would attract blessings and the things that they would do that they would attract curses. God in the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 3 when Adam and Eve disobeyed God by listening to uh, the serpent and eating the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, God cursed the man, God cursed the woman, God cursed the serpent. And those curses even from the beginning of time, are still working in our time and in our gener generation. We also spoke about Noah's curse. The curse that Noah cursed his son, uh, uh, Canaan. And so, the Bible gives us the reasons why curses occur or curses come. And so last uh, Tuesday, on the green side, we um, spoke about the first part. I gave you a few points on the causes or a few examples of the causes of curses. Now, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 2, Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 2, as the bird by wandering, as the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. Very beautiful scripture. Uh, Prophet Dagwood Mills, you know, used it even this morning um, during the flu service. And it was, it was a blessing to me because uh, that is a scripture that I use um, when I open up this, this, this series, especially on, uh, on the causes. So this is chapter 6 of the book, How to Neutralize a Case. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse, causeless, shall not come. What does, this, by, what does this verse mean? This verse is trying to tell us that birds wander. Birds, they wander. The swallow, the swallow is a type of bird. He also flies. And God or the scripture or Solomon is linking the bird wandering, the swallow flying to the curse coming without a cause. Now, how many of you have seen that sometimes maybe where you live or maybe where you work or maybe you go to a neighborhood and then birds have made a nest there and sometimes they fly, they go far. You don't even know where they go. And then at a point, they come back into the nest. So birds wander, but they know where to go. Swallow. Swallow is a type of bird. Swallow is a type of bird that is known for migration. They can migrate. They can, I mean, if you read about them, they, 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 breed, they breed in the northern hemisphere. And then during winter, they winter in the southern hemisphere. So they can, a swallow can fly from, they can fly from, let's say, uh, um, 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 Europe to North America. Can you believe it? And, 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 and it can go the rivers. That's what the bed does. And, and they know exactly where they are going. Now, so Solomon or the scripture describes a curse also like that. The curses just don't. You see, so, so curses are like birds. There are curses all over. Curses are, curses are like, you know, how the Bible describes in the beginning um, that the, the earth was without form and void. And the spirit of the Lord was what? He was brooding over uh, uh, um, the, 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 the surface of the deep, something like that. So just as the Spirit of the Lord was, you know, hovering around or brooding around, curses are like that. Curses come when you qualify for them. Are you with me? So when you qualify for a curse, the curse comes to you. When you do something that needs to attract a curse, then a curse comes to you. I hope you're getting it. So the birds, they wander, but they don't wander aimlessly. They know where they're going. They have their nest. They have trees. I mean, those of you from Georgetown, by the Demerara Harbor Bridge, you know, when you're heading, you're heading um, east. You're coming from the West Bank, you're heading to the East Bank. On, on the left, on your left side, just, just as you're about to uh, um, cross the bridge, on your left side and the right side, you see some white birds in the trees. It's so beautiful. Sometimes around 5 o'clock, you see them, a lot of them in the trees. I never saw the red version, but one day I was on a golf course and I saw the red version. It's also very, very beautiful. They know where to go 
during the day and they know where to come during the evening. The scripture, all that the scripture is trying to tell us is that curses know where to go. And curses comes into our lives because of a cause. And so if you don't cause something, if you don't, I mean, create an, an event, you don't create a cause, a curse will not come into your life. But when, when you are under a curse, I tell you, it's more serious than the devil uh, visiting you and, and staying in your house for, for the next five years. Are you with me? So we looked at a few curses and their causes. Last week we said that the curse of Adam was caused by him listening to his wife's voice instead of God's voice. Adam was cursed because he listened to his wife's voice instead of God's voice. And that's what the scripture says. You know, so it's beautiful, you know, all the wives, I, I mentioned that all the wives, you love all of you, but the wife's voice is, 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 can actually uh, uh, um, tilt you or tip you over to a good side or, or to a bad side. Are you with me? So all the, you know, hugging up and kissing up and no, 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 sweetie darling, you have to be, you have to be careful um, about the voice of your wife, whether uh, you will listen to that above that of your, of your God. And the one you said, especially pastors, pastors should watch, watch out for this. You know, if you're a pastor, you have to be very careful that your, your wife is not God. Your wife is not the Holy Spirit. Your wife is not the father. Your wife is not the one that you are led by. You are led by the spirit of God. You are led by God. And therefore you shouldn't be afraid as a pastor to disagree with your wife when it comes to her suggestions to you in the ministry. Where are my pastors? Amen. So Adam listened to his wife and he was cursed. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, verse 17, And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. I'm not the one saying it. It's right here in the scripture. Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. The reason why Adam was cursed was because he listened to his wife above the voice of God. That was the cause that brought the curse. Are you following? Curse number two. The curse on Eve came about because she influenced her husband wrongly. Watch out you ladies. Watch out you pastor's wives. Watch out you leaders of the church who are females. The curse on Eve came about because she influenced her husband wrongly. Jezebel was like that. Delilah was like that. Do you get it? So many women experience curses today because they manipulate, they misdirect, and they influence their husband's into doing the wrong things. So the Bible says here again in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 12. Then the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree. It is the woman who gave it to me. So Eve influenced Adam. And therefore, this is what God said. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know of any woman who will tell you that pregnancy, bearing a child for nine months, and then going to the labor world to push the child out is, is, is a nice experience. Women suffer through that. Many people are not even able to, uh, are not even able to move around. For six months, they are... They are, they are just, you know, the doctors just tell them not to move. Don't go anywhere. They are, they, are, <laughs> they are sentenced to their beds. Do you get it? And so this curse is still working. This is not a devil. This is not a demon. This is not, this is not obia. This is not juju. This is a curse. And so curses can have a very long lasting effect on people. And that's why Christians should be careful about curses. So when you as a Christian, you are in the church, you have to make sure that your life is, you're living a very good life, you know. That you don't do things that will attract curses. Because I'm telling you, you can be in a church and a curse can be working in your life. No matter whether you pay tithe, no matter if they pour a, a five gallon uh, um, uh, um, uh, worth of oil on your head. No matter the deliverance you go to. And that's how come sometimes many people go to deliverance every week. Week after week you're going for deliverance. Every week you're going for deliverance. How many demons do you have? Maybe there's a curse that is working, you know. Maybe you should check that out. So God cursed the woman because she influenced her husband wrongly. And therefore God cursed her. So curses don't come without a cause. Are you following? The third example is the curse on the nations. 
the curse on the nations we did it last week the curse on the nations came about because they have no compassion for the hungry the thirsty the strangers the naked the sick and the prisoners having no mercy for the people whom god loves carries a curse having no mercy for the people whom god loves carries a curse the bible says in matthew 25 and verse 41 then shall he say unto them on the left hand depart from me you cursed unto into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels for i was unhungered and you gave me no meat i was thirsty and you gave me no drink i was a stranger and you took me not in naked and you clothed me not sick and in prison and you visited me not these things if you don't take care of people in these areas you bring a curse on your life so those of you who have apartments you have houses just for you your wife and your family you 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 you, you will <laughs> You see, you, you may easily qualify for the curse that comes upon the nations. The curse that comes on people who do not entertain strangers. So there's, there's, it's always a blessing to, to, to have space in your house to entertain strangers. It's also a blessing to have some food, you know, extra to, to, to give to somebody who doesn't have food to eat. These simple, simple things, many Christians don't follow them. And therefore, you can go to church and be in church from morning to night. Now, you wouldn't even know that something bad is working in your life. Something bad is working on you. That is called a curse. Are you learning? Wonderful. Number four. Number four. The curse on Israelites was caused by they are not following in the voice of God. We spoke about this last week also. That if you don't follow the voice of God, you also walk in a curse. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15 says, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Can you imagine curses coming upon you and overtaking you? You know, the Bible says in Psalm 23, the last uh, part of Psalm 23, that goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Goodness and mercy can follow you, but curses can also follow you and overtake you. Curses can follow you and overtake you. And so you should, you should watch out, ladies and gentlemen. Set your heart, set your life, watch out, look out. Am I, am, I, am I walking in a curse? Have I done something that has caused a curse to be activated on my life? Just as you sow, let's say you plant a seed and then you, you reap a harvest. Just as you sow good things and you reap good things, when you sow bad things, you also reap bad things. Bible said, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So when you are in the church, and, and we are church people, so I, I, I can only talk about things in the church, all right? We are church people. There are many, many people who sit in church and do all kinds of things. There are many, many people who sit in church and take things for granted. You can't be in the presence of the Lord and joke. You can't be in the presence of the Lord and take things for granted. You can't be in the presence of the Lord and not do what God requires of you to do. Do you get it? So, the Bible says the Israelites were cursed because they did not hearken to the voice of the Lord. Are you still with me? Number five. The five or fifth example of a curse that came with a cause. A curse that came with a reason. Number five. The curse of Noah was caused by his son dishonoring him. The curse of Noah was caused by his son dishonoring him. So here is the son of, uh, of Noah. Noah had three boys. I'm sure you, some of you have three boys. It's beautiful to have three boys. I have, I have a sister who has three boys. It's not easy to raise three boys. It's a whole army camp. You get it? So you have three boys, um, um, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, with his beautiful wife. They were the guys who uh, were blessed enough to go into the ark. The Bible says that Noah cursed his own son. It means that Noah spoke words over his son that were not profitable. 
he spoke some words over the life of his son that were not advantageous, that were not to his advantage. Why will a father do that to a son? Noah is not mad. Noah is not crazy. There was a reason that caused Noah to release those words upon his son's life. Because his son Ham or Canaan dishonored him. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 9 and verse 24. He says, And Noah awoke from his wine, which is nobody's business. If Noah is, is drinking wine, that's nobody's business. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done. It probably looks to me here that Ham or Canaan was the, um, was the youngest. And the youngest is mostly loved, isn't it? Our last bones are mostly loved. They don't go through the, the licks, the punishment, the, the corrections, the type of rod we used to, you know, correct a child. We don't use that same rod uh, as on the first uh, uh, child as on the last child. So the Bible says that uh, Noah, when he got up from his wine, he knew what his younger son had done unto him. Unto him. And this is what he said. Cursed be Canaan. Cursed be Canaan. A servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. A servant of servants shall he be to his brethren. Now, it's very important to understand what this means. To dishonor means to cause shame or disgrace. Are you with me? To dishonor. And, 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 and you have, you, please listen to me because I have some sons in ministry. I have some people who call me their fathers in the ministry. You have to pay attention to this part because this, this is for you. The curse of Noah was caused by his son dishonoring him. To dishonor means to bring shame or to bring disgrace. Any, any son should listen to this. Now, why will Canaan, why will Ham go and mock his father because he was naked? I mean, one of the things you don't see is what Ham went to see in your father's, father's life. I mean, you hardly, you hardly see that which, which your father has. That which delivered the, the, the spermatozoids that, that brought you into this world. You, you don't see it. It's very special. It's a very nice package thing. You don't see it. A son does not see it. So Ham now, in this instance, was able to set eyes on it. And, and how can you, how can you even enjoy looking at your father's nakedness? And that's what some people are. Sometimes some people talk the names of their pastors in, bad, in a bad light. Sometimes the people you raise as children in the church, children in the ministry, they talk about you in a bad light. People and children and daughters and church members who bring shame and disgrace to their fathers and their pastors in the ministry. The Bible says that anything, you see, you, you qualify for a curse. Sometimes the man of God even doesn't have to say anything. Are you following? Sometimes we don't even have to say anything. But when you bring shame, when you bring disgrace to that person, individual, who brought you forth, who caused you to stand on the stage you are standing on, who caused you to come and stand on the platform you are standing on, who paid your school fees, who took you to school, who fed you, who raised you, who brought you up. If you bring shame and you bring disgrace to him. I mean, Father's Day is coming, so maybe this is probably a nice Father's Day, uh, something that some of you can take for, for, for Father's Day. You don't dishonor your father. You do not dishonor your father. I'm, I'm saying it again. You do not dishonor your father. Your biological father, your father in the ministry, your father-in-law, father in the faith, father of a movement, uh, 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 um, all the fathers, your father in sin, a substitute father, all the types of fathers that exist, you don't bring shame or disgrace to them. I remember one day, I have a beautiful sister called Juliet. Um, I love her very much. Um, she, she was in love. She was in love. 
And so, you know, um, in, in, in our culture, which is very much, uh, um, you know, uh, work is in, in very much in line with the scriptures, um, brought the young man home to my dad. Because my dad was interested. I mean, uh, this guy who comes and, you know, comes to visit my sister. He, he, you know, he sits on the veranda. They have a good chat. And then she goes and see him off and all of that. And so, according to custom, you know, tradition, you, you, you're supposed to come and, you know, uh, officially introduce yourself to your, your, your beloved dad. So one day the guy came, came to see my dad. And then we we're all seated. And then my father, you know, interviewed him, asked him a few questions and all of that. Then the guy told me, my, my father asked him about his background and which village he comes from. Could you believe, <laughs> could you believe, ladies and gentlemen, that because of the village that the gentleman came from, my father said, no way, no way. No, my dad said, no, you can't marry my daughter. I'm telling you about a guy that we all adored. I mean, when he comes, you know, when you are a, a little brother and somebody's, you know, hustling your sister, you know, when they come, they sometimes they bring you nice things. They give you a little, you know, a little raise and give you a little money here. Sometimes they buy some chocolate for you. Go and buy this. Just try to kind of, you know, you know, kind of soften your heart. So, I mean, he was quite an adorable guy. But when he met my dad, my dad said, you cannot. He said, he said, my dad said, no. So whether my sister was head over heels or has been swept off her feet by this young man, my father, the man who brought you into this world, says no. You see, and it was no. It was no. It was no. That was it. that was the end of the story. My sister did not pursue it. The gentleman didn't pursue it, and that's the end of the story. Now, sometimes, sometimes the mistake we do is that we dishonor, we disgrace fathers, we disgrace fathers. You see, and this is quite this is this is ignorance to the highest level. Sometimes people disgrace and bring shame to fathers because they think the fathers are wrong. They think the fathers are out of are out of line. But whether your father is out of line or not, you do not bring shame or disgrace to him. Period. Period. Can you imagine Noah? Noah, the Bible says that he was perfect in his generation. Noah was the only person God found fit. God found fit to use to build that ark and then saved the animals and a few human beings God was able to save. Now this same man of God anointing oil on his head walks in oil, walks in anointing plants a vineyard harvests the vine the grapes and then makes wine out of it and drinks the wine and gets drunk. Gets drunk. And in the drunkenness, I, I don't know, ladies and gentlemen, I wasn't there. I wish I was there to explain how the steps, the methods that made, um, uh, uh, that caused Noah to be naked. But the Bible says that he was naked because of the drunkenness. How can a man of God, anointed, used by God, to save a few people and a, a lot of species of animals. The whole world is over. They are the only people on earth. Chosen by God. Anointed vessel. How can he drink and get drunk and be found naked? Then Ham, his son now, feels that or thinks that a father has fallen low. And therefore he can give him some jobs. No, but I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, I'm saying to you, those of you young pastors who are listening, those of you in Shepherd House who are listening, those of you who are listening from Antigua, from Trinidad, from Suriname, from the States, from Guyana, and, and from Ghana, all of you are listening. It does not matter the fault of your father. 
Your father can be a drunk, a drunkard. Your father could be anybody. But you do not bring disgrace. You do not bring shame. It, it reminds me of a proverb that I used last Sunday about how, you know, growing up in, in Ghana from the Ashanti tribe, you, you are taught that you don't use your left finger to point at your, your father's home. Because growing up, you know, we, we used to use our fingers, to, we used to eat with our fingers. So you, you have to be coordinated. You have to know which one to use uh, um, to, to, to eat and which one to use to do other things. And therefore, the, 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 the hand that you use for other things, you don't use that to point at your father's house. It's that you can't bring disgrace to your father. When you do that, ladies and gentlemen, when you do that, when you do that, you, you like the spirit that was over the surface in Genesis chapter 1 to cause creation by the word of God. If you dishonor, bring shame and bring disgrace to your father, that curse that is hanging in the air, the curse that is hanging in the atmosphere, the curse that is like a bird wandering, like a swallow flying, that bird, that curse comes straight into your life. Careful now. It comes straight in your life. You don't have the audacity. You don't have the power to disgrace your father. To put your father to shame. The curse of Noah was caused by his son disgracing or causing him shame. Have you caused your father shame before? Are you causing your father shame? Are you trying to disgrace your father? Are you trying to disgrace your pastor? Are you trying to say bad things about your father? Are you trying to do that? Have you done that in the past? Well, then this message is for you. And because of you, I'm not even moving further. Because of you, I'm not even moving further. I tell you, I tell you, this curse that is wandering like a bird, this curse that comes on people who dishonor their fathers like a swallow flying has come upon you without you knowing. I can tell you that. I can tell you that. That is what the Bible says. Noah cursed him. And, and it's very interesting. We can look at it. Um, Genesis chapter 9 verse 24. Let's read Genesis chapter 9 verse 24 again. Genesis chapter 9 verse 24. Are you there? I'm, I'm being blessed by the message, I tell you. I'm being blessed by, you know, I'm not qualifying for a curse by bringing disgrace or shame to my father. Whether it's my father-in-law, whether it's my father in the ministry, you don't want to cause shame on that uh, person. So Genesis chapter, I said chapter 9, right? Is it? Okay. 9.24. Genesis chapter 9 and verse uh, 24. Oh my, my, my. Let us read the New Living Translation uh, version of Genesis chapter 9 verse 24. Bible says, When Noah woke up from his stupor, he learned what Ham, his youngest son, had done. He had brought disgrace. He had brought shame to him. Then he cursed Canaan, the son of Ham, May Canaan be cursed. May he be the lowest of servants to his relatives. <laughs> oh my. May, may you not walk in this type of curse in the name of Jesus Christ. I say, may you not walk in this type of curse in the name of Jesus Christ. May you not walk in this type of curse in the name of Jesus Christ. May he be the lowest of servants to his relatives. So what happens here? Canaan, the son of Ham, and Ham. So Ham's descendants, like God said, I, I visit the iniquities of the fathers uh, uh, um, unto the children from the first to the fourth generation. So Canaan is a, is a second generation. So Ham is the first generation. Canaan is the second generation. Uh, I, I, are, you, are you with me? So God curses Ham curses Canaan, Noah curses him, sorry, and curses Canaan and said, he will be the lowest of servants to his relatives. 
It means that when it comes to se- <laughs> it means that when you have servants, is a servant already is a servant. Are you following me? So you have the master and then you have the servant. Then among the servants, there's there's a lower is a low lower and lowest of the servants. Can, can I say it again? So you have a master, you have a servant. Noah said, may he be the lowest of servants to his relatives. So this is the master, that is the servant. And then a servant can be a low servant, a lower servant, and the lowest of servants. That is like the bottomless pit. That is where Noah spoke. And this was, this was just the words of his mouth. Be careful that you don't provoke your pastor, your spiritual father, your biological father, your heavenly father, your father-in-law, your substitute father. Substitute father is the type of father who kind of takes over from your natural father. Many of you uh, are listening to me don't have, uh, don't have fathers. Those who are blessed to be in a church, it is the pastor who is directing you, asking you about your health, asking you about your marriage, asking you about your job, correcting you, disciplining you, and talking and all of that. It is the, fa- is the pastor who has taken up the, the fatherly role and responsibility. That's the substitute father. Don't provoke this man to say something over your life, my brother and my sister. So, master, servant. Then when you have the servant, you have the low servant, the lower servant, and the lowest servant. <laughs> Are you with me? Wow. <laughs> so, the, the, the master, the servant, the lower, the low, lower, lowest servant. If you are your welcome, <laughs> you get it. Now, that is the type of curse Noah cursed his son. And this is just a son bringing disgrace to his father. A son bringing disgrace to his father. The father is provoked to release a curse on the son. I mean, I don't care where you live. You may live in uh, uh, San Francisco. You may live in uh, uh, Auckland. You may live in in, 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 uh, uh, Ashtown. You may live in in, in, in Liverpool. You may live in Amsterdam. You may live in Paris. You may live in Berlin or Frankfurt or in Rome. Wherever you live, Brussels, wherever you live, you can't bring shame or disgrace to your dad because you will walk in a curse. I am teaching about curses don't come without a cause. And so you look at it. If the curse on the curse on Eve that she was going to go through a lot of labor pains and trouble. Okay? And that curse is still active now. Now, now these days a, 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 a woman does not go to the hospital and deliver normally. Normal delivery is uncommon now, even in this country where we live in. Most women go through cesarean section. Trouble. You are walking around like a, with a, uh, as a woman with a big mark uh, on your at your lower abdomen. They cut you like you are just some some beef or some cow. Can you believe it? This can only be that which God declared in the garden of eden so so curses are so deep and wide and they go far so if you dishonor your father it means that you walk on the, the surface of this earth as a nobody you walk on the surface of this earth with a lot of things going against you the wind the north the south the east and the west wind will blow against you when you plant you will not reap when you plant as your your fruits are coming up something else comes and takes away the fruits Noah cursed his son. Why? Because his son, his, his son Ham did something. Then Noah said, apart from saying that he will be the lowest of servants to his relatives, Noah said, May the Lord, the God of Shem, be blessed. So he's cursed Ham. Then he, he goes to his other son, Shem, and blesses him. Then he says, May God expand the territory of Japheth. What is the other son? Probably the oldest. And if you do, if you study Bible a little bit, Japheth is the descendant, is the father of all the white people. Shem is the is the father of all the Arabs, the Middle Eastern folks. And then Ham is the father of black people. So Noah blesses Shem, blesses Japheth, 
He says, may Japheth share the prosperity of Shem. And then look at, look at, look at, are you with me? Genesis chapter 9 and verse 27. He says, may Japheth share the prosperity of Shem and may Canaan be his servant. So he curses Ham, demotes him by the, the words of his mouth to a servant level, the lowest of servants. So please look at things. If you find yourself in anywhere and you are always the lowest, working at the bottom, always the one that eats last, always the one that, you see, so, so again, I know some of you might not, might not even like like it that I'm saying this. But you see, if you really study the Bible, and indeed, if the black people, the black race, is are the descendants of Ham, if 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 indeed what the if you study the Bible, that is what it is, then it probably explains why we are now saying black lives matter. As if it's only black people who are who have life. I know I, I may not be popular by saying this. Why? Has it come down to this? Now, I said somebody's got Guyanese critic or something. The guy is in trouble. He has gone to use, he's gone to say that black people can't read. Come and see the trouble he has here in Guyana. Why? Why does it always have to be black people? Why? Maybe, perhaps, maybe, maybe, perhaps, this curse, if indeed the black generation stems from him, then maybe. The lowest, treated like nothing, always seen in a certain way, as if you don't have anything, as if you don't have anything to offer. But black people are very precious people, very powerful people, very knowledgeable. A black man a pilots a plane from A to B, a white man does the same thing. There's no difference. If you go to the US of A, almost the sports, the music industry, it's all dominated by black people. But how come black people are not treated well? Perhaps, perhaps, is this thing that is working. Are you with me? So, how to neutralize the case? We go back to our points that we are looking at. We go back to our book. The curse of Noah was caused by his son dishonoring him. Let me give you number six, and then we will close. Number six. The curse on the Israelites was caused by they are not paying tithes. Hey, I think, you see, I will stay on this one. I will, I will leave this one for next week. The curse on the Israelites was caused by they are not paying tithes. Uh, this, this, I have to dive into tithing. I have to dive into giving of tithes. I have to dive into a tenth of your increase. I have to dive and delve into one tenth of your salary, one tenth of every blessing that comes your way. I, I, I need time to look at this curse. But let me read the, the, the scripture before I bring um, our service this evening to a close. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Those who don't give offerings. <laughs> you are cursed with a curse. You are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me. Even this whole nation. Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 and verse 9. I don't want to touch on tithe yet. It's a, it's a whole book. It's a whole book. But what you need to understand is that those who don't pay tithe, especially around this time, thank you, uh, Dijon, especially around this time where people are scrapping for, for, for everything, the, the, the least, you know, to keep, to hold on to, you are causing something to come upon you. We'll look at the sixth cause of a curse, and that is the curse that comes through um, the non-paying or non-honoring of God through the payment or giving of your tithe. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for your word. Thank you for all the 
teachings you you're giving to us your word says curses don't come without a cause if we find ourselves going through a cycle of unpleasant occurrences unpleasant situations unpleasant happenings maybe 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 there may be something that we may have done that has caused us to be reaping all those happenings i pray for your people as we started looking into this book looking into this subject i pray for your people anyone who is operating under a curse i stand in my place of god as a shepherd and i take authority over that curse and i break it asunder in the name of jesus as for your grace as for your mercy as for your pardon pardon them oh god pardon them for their ignorance oh god but it was in the days of ignorance you god you overlooked let there be an overlooking of god over your people they did it out of ignorance i know going for it by virtue of this teaching and this book how to neutralize the case by daggy what nails your people are going to be careful in how they do things and how they say things thank you for blessing our fellowship together tonight in jesus name amen maybe you're watching me tonight you're not saved you're not born again you want to say bishop please pray with me i want to give my heart to jesus i want to pray with you if you don't know where you would go if you're to die right now the most important thing now for you to know is not who won the election in guyana it's not what claude the singer is going to declare but the most important thing you need to know is about the fact that many many years ago someone called jesus came down lived died was crucified on the cross of calvary was was buried rose again on the third day and the bible says that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life if you believe in ap and you you and you don't believe in jesus you die and you perish you believe in whatever pbp all the p's and all the a's and whatever it is you believe in these people and you don't believe in jesus you die you go to hell you will perish so you want to pray this prayer with me if you are not saved say with me heavenly father I am a sinner. Forgive me of all my sins. Wash me with the blood of Jesus. I believe with my heart. And I confess with my mouth. That Jesus is Lord. That Jesus is Lord. Say it, that Jesus is Lord. And that he died. And God raised him from the dead. I open my heart. And I invite Jesus Christ. To come into my heart. To be my Lord and my Savior. I believe. By this simple prayer. My life has changed. I am born again. And my name is in the book of life. Thank you, Father, for saving my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you. If you pray that prayer with us, uh, you can, you know, inbox us, Shepherd House International Guyana. Send us a, me a message, private, you know, private message that where you live, um, someone, one of the pastors will, you know, will be in touch with you will help you find where we will fellowship and all of that things are happening even in this pandemic in ghana things are happening all kinds of things are happening so you may not, you, you may never know what god wants to do with you so contact us um by sending us a, a message shepherd house international guyana right there on facebook uh we will get back to you now it's time to give an offering you want to give an offering why not um mmg uh mmg number if you are in guyana a mobile money number or a momo number is six two seven three seven three six six two seven three seven three six so you want to give an offering why not uh, send the offering you know send 500 send 1000 send 5000 send, send all of you who support green just send send 5000 10000 send us green notes to show that you support APNU, isn't it <laughs> so send your offerings to uh, and your tithe also to six two seven three seven three six i believe god will bless you if you're in the caribbean you can also send us an offering um, through our Scotia Bank account. Uh, the details will be posted right after this service on our Facebook page right there, um, Shepherd House International Guyana. For those of you who are pastors or know any pastors, we have started um, a new pastors association right here in Guyana called Give Thyself Holy Guyana. If you want to join also, send us a private message, Shepherd House International Guyana, and we will um, get back to you registration the procedure and everything this is a wonderful uh, group of pastors group of churches um this is this this is this is born out of the pandemic i believe that god has a purpose god has a purpose for a newer generation 
uh, in the affairs of Guyana way when it comes to spiritual things. So if you're a young pastor, you have a church, you're part of a church, you know, send us a message, Shepherd House International Guyana. You want to join, give thyself holy, this new association of pastors. I believe that to be a blessing to you. So until next week, um, by the grace of God on the green side, I have been your pilot, host. It was a, a privilege to come your way tonight. God bless you. I'll see you next week.